This video is part two in a series on controlling model trains using a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino or similar microcontroller. In part one, I explained about how you take the AC supply and convert that into a DC supply from alternating current to direct current, um, which is needed for the um, DC motors in the trains. So if you want to look at that, um, I'll put details in the description. Um, but from now on, we're going to assume that we've got a DC supply voltage, which could be from that previous circuit, or indeed, you can just take a, a DC transformer. Um, in one of the setups I've got, I've literally taken an old laptop power supply from uh, a defunct laptop, a 19 volt DC power supply, which is uh, going to be ideal for controlling my outdoor model railway, which takes typically a voltage of between uh, 12 and 16 volts, or it can, it can go straight up to full 19 volts so without any problems. DC motors work by having a positive supply on one side and a negative supply on the other and creates a magnetic field and the direction of that electrical supply determines the direction that the motor moves it. If you want to change the direction then you swap the connectors round and it goes in the opposite direction. Now on uh, most model railway controllers that come with your train sets. This is performed by using a mechanical switch and it's got a double pop switch that flips the um, positive and negative rails around. Obviously if we're going to do some kind of automation control we don't want to have to have a manual switch that we have to flick. Um, in the old days you could have used a relay or you still can use a relay um, which performs that same action but electronically but there's a lot of better solutions these days using uh, solid state devices rather than having to use magnetic relays. So the one particular one we're looking at here is the H-Bridge controller and this is pretty standard um, technique for changing the direction of, or changing the voltage direction um, for a DC motor. Uh, Internally it consists of essentially you've got four transistors and you connect turn the diagonal opposite ones on and will cause the voltage to go in one direction and then switch them to the other two and it go in the opposite direction. This is uh, best seen by looking at the, the diagram which shows this. The one thing you need to avoid is turning the two transistors on that are say one side or, or the other side together because if you do you'll have a direct short circuit from the positive to the negative and that's pretty much game over. You can block this um, digitally um, through some kind of physical um, connection in an electronic circuit or you can do it through software and Perhaps the simplest solution um, is to use a H-Bridge uh, integrated circuit instead of using individual transistors and that includes all the protection in there that prevents you accidentally uh, trying to uh, drive the, the motor in both directions at the same time and shorting out the uh, power supply and causing problems that way. There's a couple of different integrated circuits that we can look at. So here's the two um, most common um, H-Bridge integrated circuits that are used in model train control. So this particular one is um, a dual in-line package. It's called the SN754410. And uh, it's capable of driving up to one amp. So that should be fine for your internal railways, uh, such as the um, HO00 type um, scale, but um, if you wanted to drive larger um, railways such as a, an outdoor G scale, then you probably need to, to look at the other one. The, the nice thing about this is a dual in line package, 
Um, so that easily fits onto a breadboard. So you can create your own circuit using breadboard. You don't need to do any soldering. And, uh, and you can um, be up and running and then try that out. It, it, you can just buy the, the integrated circuit on its own, but this came as a little package of the, um, the H-Bridge controller. A mount, a uh, integrated circuit holder. Um, this allows you to solder that directly onto a, a circuit board if you wanted to make a better board or a PCB. And then the integrated circuit just pops in and out. A couple of advantages. One, it means that you're not soldering direct on the IC, so if you overheat one of the pins, you're not at risk of, of damaging it. Um, and it also means that you can, if you want to use that in another um, somewhere else, then you can just pop it out. And then it also includes the um, small capacitor, which just connects across the power supply um, to smooth the power supply a little bit. This can be used to, to control up to two motors but you're limited to only one amp. This other one, um, you see it's, it's quite a bit bigger, it's got a big um, mounting point for connecting to a um, heat sink is because this is uh, more powerful. This is the L298N which is a very common um, Hadebridge controller and it goes up to 2 amp. Now the one downside about this is if you look at the pins, which you probably can't see very well with the camera, I'll hold it up nice and close, you'll see that they don't actually line up um, side by side like the other um, dueling line uh, components do. And this means it doesn't really fit onto a, a breadboard. You can make it fit if you want, but it's, it's going to be a case of twisting or damaging um, the component. However, um, what you can get, um, and they are very cheaply available, is a motor control board that already has this on, um, already mounted with the heat sink and with some screw terminals to make it really easy to connect up. And I suggest you that you look at getting one of those um, rather than um, buying these directly. Um, if that's what you want to do. Uh, these will, will pull up to two amps and again control two motors. So these are a quite nice little thing and those controller boards are really useful. In that video we've covered um, how the H-Bridge works and given you some pointers. If you want to get one of these then you can just connect them up and by controlling there's two pins for each half of the of the circuit for each motor and um, basically taking that one high will send it in the forwards direction sending the other high will send it in the reverse direction we've now got the train uh, we've got the power supply great moving backwards and forwards in the next video um, look at how we can change the speed by using pulse width modulation or pwm so i hope you found this useful and to be notified about the next video when it comes out if you click subscribe to the channel and if you click on the bell notification then you'll be told once the uh, once the next video is available